learn about the standard enthalpy change. Okay, if you look at the standard enthalpy change in our syllabus for AS, uh, they are they are according to the textbook. There are seven uh, enthalpy change. Okay, we need to know the definition, right? So we have enthalpy change of reaction. Okay, number one is enthalpy change of reaction. Number two is going to be enthalpy change of formation. Number three will be enthalpy change of combustion. Enthalpy change of neutralization. Enthalpy change of solution. Enthalpy change of atomization. And then we have enthalpy change of hydration of anhydrous salt. Now, out of all these, okay, uh, in your AS exam, okay, they will like uh, one of the popular questions that they ask is going to be define uh, the enthalpy change, okay, the standard enthalpy change of something. And when it comes to de a definition, okay. Uh, the common definition, the common questions that they will always ask, okay, this one I will actually put it over here. Enthalpy of formation, okay, will be one of the popular one that is being asked. Enthalpy of combustion is another popular one. Enthalpy change of neutralization is also popular. And then we have enthalpy change of atomization, also popular in your AS, okay. Now for hydration and solution, that doesn't mean it's not important because there is a component of this that you will learn in A2. Uh, the definition will be more, I think, important or you need to know more okay, when you learn uh, in your A level, yeah, your A2. But for now, okay, uh, for today's lesson, I want all of you to actually know the definition, yeah, the definition of this uh, uh, all this, okay, the seven. So uh, I have given you a note, uh, note on that, okay. So uh, I have written it over here, okay. The each definition, you can always actually check from your textbook. But I will go through one by one, okay. So we will actually discuss about uh, this, okay, uh, more detail here. So here, okay, the first one is going to be known as enthalpy change of reaction. But before that, before we go there, before I forget, okay, when we actually uh, write down, okay, uh, when we want to uh, discuss about standard enthalpy change, there is important thing that you need to notice is going to be about the word standard. Okay, what is the word standard means, okay? Everything that we uh, define or every experiments when we actually do the enthalpy change calculation, it must be all done under standard condition. What are the standard conditions? Okay, this is what you need to remember. Yeah, so it's hundred kilopascal. Okay, hundred kilopascal, or it's going to be one atmospheric pressure. Okay, one atmospheric pressure is hundred. Uh, kilopascal to be exact is 101 kilopascal but we will follow your syllabus we will follow the textbook it's 100 kilopascal which is one atmospheric pressure if you're a physics student okay so this one should be one atmospheric pressure is how many millimeter mercury josh any idea no, i'm not sure sir uh ryan any idea uh, not sure, sir. Okay, this one is physics. Okay, one atmospheric pressure is going to be 760 millimeter mercury. It means uh, the atmospheric pressure will push the mercury uh, to the height of 76 centimeter, actually. Okay, this one is part of your physics. Okay, but anyway, uh, when it comes to chemistry, you just need to know 100 kilopascal is one atmospheric pressure. The temperature that we will use is going to be 25 degrees Celsius or if you convert to degree, uh, if you convert the degree Celsius to Kelvin, you are going to get 298 Kelvin. You just need to add 273 over there. Okay. And all these reactions okay, must happen or whenever you have the reactants, 
the reactants must be, when we say the physical state of those reactants, uh, those reactants must follow the physical state at this standard condition. Okay, for example, okay, iodine. Okay, iodine when it is in uh, 25 degrees Celsius and one atmospheric pressure, uh, oven, what is going to be the physical state of iodine when it is going to be 25 degrees Celsius, 100 kilopascal? Is it gas, sir? No, it's not gas. I hope you remember, yeah. Uh, I know that uh, iodine, okay, please remember iodine, they can actually exist as solid, liquid, or gas, okay, and I have uh, I have mentioned about the color as well. The color of iodine solid is going to be what is the color of iodine solid, um, Nathan? Hurry up! Don't waste time. Is it yellow? No, black. Yeah, it's a black solid. Okay, it's a black solid. If it is going to be in liquid form, so it's going to be brown. And this one in gases form, everyone should know. Okay, Thompson, what is the color? Not sure, just tell not sure. We will uh, ask someone else. Not sure. Okay, Megan? Purple. Yes, it's purple. Now, we also have learned, okay, that under group 17, okay, when we have group 17, it's going to be FCBI. And then after that, there is also S13, okay? So here, okay, when you go down the group, okay, we know that the size is increasing, okay? Because the number of shell is increasing and they always like to stay in F2, Cl2, Br2, I2, and so on. It means when we talk about the melting point and boiling point, we talk about the van der Waal forces of attraction. Now, uh, Josh, what can you say about the van der Waal forces of attraction when they go down the group? Are they increasing or are they going to decrease? It's decreasing. No. Remember, van der Waal forces depends on the size and it depends, the size is directly related to the number of electrons. So it means when they become bigger and bigger, okay, it means that there is more number of electrons. If there is more number of electrons, it means your van der Waal forces, when they go down, the van der Waal forces is going to become higher, bigger. So when it becomes bigger, okay, what happens is you need more energy to separate the F2 and F2, to separate Cl2 and Cl2. It means your boiling point and melting point is going to actually go up. If the boiling point and melting point is going to go up, okay, it means that your, uh, your physical state, okay, coming back to oven, okay, the physical state is going to change from being gas to being solid because the melting point and boiling point is going to increase. So now, okay, uh, oven, can you actually guess what will be, uh, like for example, F2 is gas. How, uh, what do you... Uh, uh, sorry, what can you tell about Cl2? Is it going to be gas, liquid, or solid? Pretty. Uh, not sure, sir. Gas. Okay. The first two will be gas. Okay. The first two will be gas. Bromine is going to be in uh, liquid. Okay. Bromine is going to be liquid. Starting from iodine is going to be solid. So I want you to remember this. So coming back to my question over here, when under standard condition, all of them must actually, the reactant must be at the, uh, the state, okay, that uh, they exist in 25 degrees Celsius. Iodine, they exist in form of solid. So they are going to be in solid form at 25 when you put it as reactant. Okay, I want you to actually understand this part. But again, okay, this is, um, I don't want to focus now, okay. So now, okay, I want to actually focus on the definition. Now, the first definition is going to be related to enthalpy change of reaction, okay. Now, enthalpy change, you should know that when we write the, when we write the, how, uh, hold on. 
when we write okay the symbol is the uh, triangle h the reaction is going to be r but do remember we do not simply say enthalpy change of reaction every single time when we refer to all these enthalpy changes they must be accompanied by okay standard it means here i must write standard enthalpy change of reaction to show that Okay, I'm doing this at 25 degrees Celsius and I'm doing this experiment at 100 kilopascal. So this is going to be, okay, in order to show standard, standard, there is going to be a symbol, something like this. So when I give the symbol, okay, this one must be there. Okay, this symbol is going to tell us, okay, this is going to be standard enthalpy of reaction so what does it mean okay is the enthalpy change when the amount of reactants react to give products okay one example if you have hydrogen reacting with oxygen okay to give you h2o and if i want to balance this if i put one over two okay it's balanced if i have delta h is going to be 90 for example yeah just 90 okay so this means, okay, this means this delta H, okay, that I have written, okay, is actually referring to this enthalpy change of reaction. So for any reaction, okay, for any reaction, just follow, okay, any, uh, like, for example, I'll give you one more reaction. If you have nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen gas to give you ammonia, just balance it first, okay? There is two, then I put three over there, okay? So this one, delta H, is going to be negative 92 kilojoule per mole, yeah? So this means, what, what this delta H means, this delta H is just telling us is actually enthalpy change of reaction. What reaction? is the reaction between hydrogen, okay, with the nitrogen, okay, to give you ammonia. To be exact, one mole of nitrogen reacting with three moles of hydrogen to give you two moles of ammonia. Okay, that is enthalpy change of reaction. And do remember, just now I told you, under standard condition, they must follow. Okay, the uh, reactant that you have. Okay, they must follow the uh, physical state at this condition. So let's actually write down the physical state. Yeah. Hydrogen at 25 degrees is going to be gas. Oxygen is always going to be gas. Water at 25 degrees is going to be liquid. Just write down, liquid. Nitrogen is gas. Hydrogen is gas. Ammonia is gas. Okay, just follow the, uh, the one that you know. Okay, just put, put it over there. So I hope you understand about enthalpy change of reaction. Eh? Any kind of reaction, okay, any kind of reaction, even... A decomposition reaction also doesn't matter what kind, whatever reaction, like for example, calcium carbonate, when they decompose to give you calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide, okay, this is also, let's say, delta H. Okay, let's actually check whether you remember this. Ryan, is this going to be an exothermic reaction or endothermic reaction, decomposition? Endothermic. Endothermic. So positive. Let's say I just come up with 90. Yeah, positive 90. Now, this reaction, for this particular reaction, this delta H represents enthalpy change of reaction. It means for this reaction, when this reaction happens, 90 kilojoule of energy is being absorbed for this reaction to happen. So I want you to understand this. But again, Calcium carbonate under 25 degrees Celsius is going to be solid. This is going to be solid. This is going to be gas. I hope you understand this part. It's very easy. Yeah. Let's go for the second part. Okay. Now things are going to be slightly different. Enthalpy change of formation. Okay. To form something. So let's actually start with the uh, symbol. Triangle H formation just follow f and do remember it must be standard so standard must have this this is the symbol for standard uh, change of formation now let's actually look at the definition 
Now, the definition is going to be the enthalpy change, okay, the energy change, when one mole of compound is being formed from its element, okay, under standard condition. So it means one mole of compound being formed from its element. Let's actually ask someone to actually give me one example of a compound. Uh, Wilson, give me one example of a compound that you know. A compound. There's so many compounds in the world. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Okay, good. Okay, carbon dioxide is a compound. So let's say actually now carbon dioxide. Now, according to this definition, the enthalpy change when one mole of this compound is being formed from its element. It means carbon dioxide is being formed. One mole of it is being formed. Okay, from its element. Can you tell me what are the elements that exist in carbon dioxide? Sharon? Carbon and oxygen. Carbon and oxygen. Now, is O2 element, Sharon? Uh, yeah. O2 is element, yeah, take note, okay? So, rather than actually just putting it as O, okay, it's O2. O2 is element, okay? O2 is element. Now, these are the element, carbon and oxygen reacting to give you carbon dioxide. Now, so now see whether it's balanced. In this case, all balanced. And then now I need to actually write down the states. So when I write down the state, I know carbon is going to be solid. Oxygen is going to be gas. And then I know carbon dioxide is going to be gas. So this thing is going to be enthalpy of formation. Whatever value that you have is going to be, uh, it's going to be referred as enthalpy change of formation. I give you another one more example, okay, for uh, enthalpy change of formation. Let's say we want to form Fe2O3. Fe2O3 is a solid. And I want to actually write down the equation of enthalpy of formation of FeO2, uh, Fe2O3. So I am going to write down, okay, based on its elements. So Po Yiwen, tell me what are the elements that exist for Fe2O3? Oxygen and iron. Okay. So O2 is element. So now let's actually balance it. Okay, you see 2Fe, I put 2Fe. Now here is going to be something that you need to really, really, really take note. Now there's three oxygen over here, three atoms of oxygen. How to make sure that you have only three atoms of oxygen here? You divide this by two, you get one atom of oxygen. And then you want three atoms of oxygen, just put three over there. Now, in chemistry, I told you we do not write fractions. But in this case, we must write fraction. Why? Because according to the definition, it's one mole of the compound being formed. So if I times this by two, for example, 4Fe plus 3O2 to give me 2Fe2O3, is it right to refer it as enthalpy of formation? Uh, Nathan, is it right to refer it as enthalpy uh, formation? Yes. No. Because it's two moles. So if you want to write for that, it's supposed to be two times enthalpy of formation. Okay, because it's actually for one mole. If you have two moles, then it's two times enthalpy of formation. So please take note of this. Okay, another example given in your textbook is CS2, which is in liquid form. Carbon is going to be in solid, and then you are going to get sulfur. Okay, sulfur, and then they actually put um, two sulfur. And then the sulfur, I think they put it as a uh, gas. Okay, let me actually double check. Sulfur, they put solid. Okay, so sulfur is going to be solid. And then they put like this. 
Uh, this is another example as well, enthalpy of formation. I hope you understand this. The idea is for formation, so I'm just going to actually erase this so that you don't get confused. The idea is in order to get for formation, it means you want this number to be one and you get it from its elements. Okay, that is important. Now let's actually go to quest, uh, number three. This is very easy. Enthalpy change of combustion. Yeah, Jeffrey can go. Now, enthalpy change of combustion. Now, is the enthalpy change when one mole of substance is burned in excess oxygen? It's very easy. Okay, one mole of substance being burned in excess oxygen. Now, it is very uh, interesting also. Sometimes, okay, whatever things that you write, it can be reused again. For example, I'll just uh, show you this one. I'll erase a little bit on this. Now, let's actually have a look at this. Just now we mentioned that this is going to be enthalpy of uh, formation, right? But if I put it over here, let's actually see whether this one satisfies enthalpy change of combustion or not. Okay, let's ask someone, Audrey. According to this uh, definition that you see over here, do you think that this equation that I just put over here, instead of having it as uh, enthalpy of formation, can we also write it as enthalpy of combustion? Yes. Yes. Okay, you can see uh, something when missing carbon dioxide, right? Carbon is missing. So anyway, you can see over here, this is one example of enthalpy of combustion. Why? Because I am going to react one mole of carbon okay, with excess of oxygen and it is burning. So this is also going to be enthalpy change of combustion. They can have two. Okay, they can have two. So let's actually have a look at sulfur and CH4, for example. If I want to write the combustion, yeah. Sulfur, when they combust, sulfur plus oxygen gives you SO2. As simple as that. So one mole of this is going to be burned to give uh, with excess oxygen to give you SO2. So sulfur, just now I told you, is uh, solid. This is going to be gas. Now this is going to give you gas. This is enthalpy change of combustion. And then, so enthalpy change of combustion is C, and then they put like this. Another example, okay, very common example, CH4, yeah, related to CH4. It's a hydrocarbon when you burn. So do remember it's excess oxygen, so you do not have incomplete combustion yet. Yeah? So you will have carbon dioxide and water, okay? So let's actually try to balance it first, okay? So I put two there, hydrogen four, okay? Then uh, carbon is one, is balanced. So oxygen, I have total of uh, four oxygen. So I just put two there. And you can see here, my, the important thing that I want to focus is one mole of this substance, okay? One mole of CH4 is being burned with excess oxygen, okay? And uh, it's giving you the product. So this one, whatever value that you are going to get over here is going to be your enthalpy of combustion. Okay, I want you to understand this. And do remember, enthalpy of combustion is exothermic or endothermic? Michelle Wee, is it always exothermic or always endothermic? Based on our uh, previous lesson. Uh, sorry, sir, what's the question? Um, combustion, okay, enthalpy of combustion. Do you think it's going to be always negative or always positive? Always, Ex yeah. Uh, exothermic. Yes, it's always exothermic. So in this case, the value is always negative. Negative, okay. So I'll put it over here, always exothermic. Okay, do take note of this. So number four, okay, let's actually uh, go on, okay, for number four. Now, enthalpy change of neutralization. So 
this is going to be neutralization when you have a reaction of acid and alkali okay when one mole of water is being formed and then there's uh, energy change that is going to be enthalpy change of neutralization so this one's supposed to be standard enthalpy change of neutralization so how do we write it's going to be triangle h n and then like this this is enthalpy change of neutralization let's actually write down one equation okay give me one example of acid uh, uh audrey sulfuric acid okay sulfuric acid maybe later yeah but maybe uh, another one more maybe nathan can you give me one example of an acid nitric acid okay nitric acid now uh give me one example of alkali um wilson alkali uh, naoh yeah so what you are going to get you are going to get sodium nitrate plus h2o okay it's already balanced right now it, this is a neutralization reaction and you can see that one mole of water is being formed okay so the energy that is given out over here is going to be known as enthalpy change of neutralization and take note similar like just now combustion is exothermic neutralization megan is it going to be exothermic or endothermic exothermic Yes, it's always going to be exothermic. So always going to be negative. Okay. So now I want to actually uh, go back to what um, Audrey actually mentioned just now, H2SO4. Let's actually try with this H2SO4. You will get Na2SO4 plus H2O. When I balance, I put two there. And then uh, I have hydrogen. I have four, so I put like this. I think everything is balanced. Now, is it right okay, for me to write down this as enthalpy change of neutralization? Owen? Refer to the definition. Owen, are you with us? Yes, sir. Sorry, my Wi-Fi just arrived. So, is it right to actually say that the H2SO4 plus NaOH is going to be enthalpy of neutralization using this equation? Uh, yes. No. Okay. Be very careful with this. Okay, because it's one mole of water being formed. Okay. So here, two moles of water being formed. Okay. So in this case, whatever value that you write over there, okay, if let's say here is going to be, let's say your delta H, I'll just put down as delta H. If this is delta H and negative 90, for example, and if I ask you, what is the enthalpy change of neutralization? Your answer will be, Enthalpy change of neutralization is negative 45. Why? Because negative 90 is for two moles of water. I need for one mole of water. So this value is not enthalpy change of neutralization. To be exact, this value is two times enthalpy of neutralization. I hope you understand this. So if you want to find out, you have to divide it by two. Or if you want to write it down as enthalpy of neutralization, what you need to do? Quite simple, just put half H2SO4 plus NaOH gives you half Na2SO4 plus H2O. Ah, this is going to be enthalpy change of neutralization. I hope you understand this concept. Okay, again, uh, at standard condition, they are all aqueous, aqueous, aqueous liquid. This is enthalpy change of neutralization. OK, 
Okay, let's move on. Before that, is there any question or any clarifications? Even, can you understand? Yeah. Okay. So now let's actually move on to enthalpy change of solution. Yeah. So enthalpy change of solution, again, this is a standard, yeah, standard enthalpy change of solution. So we put delta H, okay, solution, and then they put like this. This is going to be the enthalpy change when one mole of solute is dissolved in solvent to form indefinitely dilute so, uh, solution. So this one, okay, example from textbook, NaOH, solid, when you dissolve with water, they will give you NaOH aqueous. Okay, this is the equation. So the amount of uh, energy change that is happening over here, uh, this is going to be known as enthalpy change of solution. But do remember just now, when I wrote over here, I didn't put a star. Okay, I didn't put a star for that because it's not going to be that important now. Yeah, enthalpy change of solution, okay. Still, we need to know, okay, but they, uh, it's not going to be so important. So I'm not going to focus over here. I'm going to actually go on to this enthalpy change of atomization, the one that I put the star also, yeah. Enthalpy change of atomization. So again, it's supposed to be standard. So this is going to be triangle H. So this is AT, okay, atomization. So it's a standard. This is going to be the symbol for it. Now, let's actually look at the definition. Is the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous atom is uh, formed from its element? Okay, one mole of gaseous atom, yeah, atom from its element. Okay, for example, if I have H2, H2 is an element, okay, and H2. Uh, in uh, at 25 degrees Celsius, is it gas, liquid, or solid, Giuliano? Uh, gas. Yes. Okay. Gas. So now, when they actually uh, break into atoms, they supposed to give you two atoms of hydrogen. Am I correct? Okay. But when you follow the enthalpy change of atomization, it's supposed to be one mole of gases atom to be formed. So what you need to do is, you need to change this equation into half H2 gives you H gas, okay? Gas, and this is going to be gases atom, gases atom. This is going to be enthalpy change of atomization. I hope you understand this. Okay, I'll give you another example. Carbon, okay, carbon is solid at 25 degrees Celsius because normally it can be existing in graphite form. Okay, this carbon solid, when they actually change into atom, so carbon changing into gas, Okay, this is also going to be known as enthalpy of atomization of carbon. So the difference is, the important thing is there should be one mole of atom and they must be in gases form to be formed. Let's actually try one more example. I2. So tell me I2. Just now, I think I do not know who did I ask. I forgot. Christopher. Okay. Christopher, I2 uh, is solid, liquid, or gas? Solid. Okay. Solid. Now, according to atomization, I need to form one mole of I. Okay. And then what do I need to do to actually write this as enthalpy of atomization? Make uh, the I2 solid into half, uh, okay. half a mole. Okay. Okay, then? Uh, the I is make the, write the gas symbol. Yes, very good. So you get the idea, okay? BR2. Okay, Kevin. 
BR2 at room temperature 25 degrees Celsius, standard condition, what is going to be the state? Liquid. Liquid. Now, how do I write this in terms of enthalpy of atomization? BR2. This is gas then? 1 over 2 moles on the BR2. Yes. BR or BR2? Okay, supposed to be BR2, yeah? So this is going to be the way that you write. Please take note, this is enthalpy of atomization, okay? And the definition, please take note. Gas, one mole of gases atom is formed from its elements under standard condition. The element must be under standard condition. Now, the last one is the enthalpy change of hydration. It's not so important. Enthalpy change when one mole of hydrated salt is formed from one mole of anhydrate, uh, anhydrous salt. For example, okay, when you have this salt, okay, 5H2O, they are going to actually have Na2S2O3 dot 5H2O. And I'm very sure if you do not know that, this one, I'm very sure you know about this. Okay, copper sulfate, okay, they are going to actually change it to CuSO4 dot 5H2O. Okay, why I said you must know this, okay, because I think um, this is a test for water, okay. Uh, if you want to test for water, uh, whether a liquid is going to be water or not, we can test using anhydrous copper sulfate. So how do we test copper sulfate? What is the color? Anhydrous copper sulfate, Thompson, what do you think is the color? White. Brown, no, it's actually white. White, white. white. Yeah, it's it's white. white. Yeah, then, oh, sorry, so I, uh, I have heard wrongly, but it's white. Then after you add water, Thompson, it will change into? Blue. Blue. Okay, very good. So this is going to be when you have a hydrated salt. This is hydrated salt. So the hydrated salt is going to actually be into blue. So it's going to be uh, one of the indication to show it's going to be um, a test for water, for example. Okay, but according to the definition, this is the definition. Again, I told you this is not so important. Even in the textbook, they didn't even mention about how to write enthalpy of hydration, but I will write down over here enthalpy of hydration is like this. Yeah. We will learn more about hydration later in A2. Yeah. So here can okay, you can see this atomization. Uh, solution and uh, so on. Okay, but when I come over here, okay, I have written another uh, some uh, some notes over here. Okay, very important notes as, uh, actually. Okay, uh, enthalpy of combustion is always going to be negative. Yeah, Arwen can. Enthalpy of combustion is always going to be negative. Enthalpy of neutralization is always going to be negative. And this one, remember, enthalpy of atomization is always going to be positive. Why? Okay, according to the definition, atomization, yeah. Atomization, you are actually changing solid to gas, liquid to gas. Okay, it means you are trying to break bonds. Okay, when you try to break bonds, you need to have energy. You need to absorb energy. Okay, so the reaction is always going to be endothermic reaction. Atomization is always endothermic reaction. Even if you have just gas to gas, okay, you are breaking the bond between hydrogen uh, gases as well. Okay, so you are going to actually break the bond. Okay, when you break the bond, so this one is going to be endothermic. Okay, I will discuss more about breaking bond and forming bond later, but this is going to be endothermic always. Yeah, always. Uh, enthalpy of solution can be positive, can be negative. Okay, the rest I think can be all positive or negative. Reaction can be positive or negative depending on the situation. Okay, so this one, okay, I want you to remember about these three. Okay, must be, yeah, must be. So that is very important. Okay. Any questions up to here?